Good morning, and Merry Christmas, <laughs> and uh, probably appropriate time to say Happy New Year, because by the time uh, we see one another again, it may very well be uh, into the new year. So uh, I don't know about anybody else, but most of us are kind of looking forward to that, I think. <laughs> well, as we look at our prayer list, um, would uh, lift them up before you, Robbie and her sister, Sarah, and uh, the uh, families of Linda Vandermark, the uh, Milligan family, and Brenda Geyer, uh, and the loss of loved ones. We certainly want to lift up Jeremy, uh, continue to hold him up, and uh, I haven't had a recent update on his concussion, but it, uh, it was significant, and they can last a long time, so let's keep him in our prayers. Sadie's doing very well. We're really grateful for that, and pleased, and rejoicing. Um, Dave Thomas, uh, the last I knew, was still uh, on a ventilator in the hospital, and uh, would, I would appreciate prayers for him. In addition, uh, Kathy and I have a neighbor, uh, Lee Ward, and Lee is in the hospital now suffering from, I'm assuming it's COVID, uh, but he has blood clots in his lung as well, uh, and uh, he is not doing well and would really appreciate prayers. So. Let's lift Lee up. He's a good neighbor. When we uh, had lived there for four or five years with no neighbor in the house next door, you know, it's, it's kind of nice, <laughs> you know, in one sense. Then we found out neighbors were coming, and it was like, well, I guess it was, you know, it was uh, not something that was going to last. And, and, uh, and so uh, they came, and we got to know Lee very well, and uh, he has been just a phenomenal neighbor, so we ask for prayers for him. Um, also, uh, Steve Georgia fell while he was putting his train track up. He stepped, and if you've been to the Georgia residence, you know there's a stairway there. He fell, sat down very hard, and broke his L1 vertebrae. So would ask you to be in prayer for uh, Steve Georgia. Uh, and also, uh, Frank Reynolds had a mini stroke this week. He is home again and doing well, and so we are uh, rejoicing in that. Uh, but let's keep Frank in our prayers as well. Are there any other prayer concerns or joys or announcements you'd like to lift up? Yes. Okay, was that Brian or Ryan? Brian. Okay, uh, and, uh, and he has cancer. Okay, well, we will certainly lift him up in prayer. Ah, yep. I have another great-grandson. Ah, another great-grandson. Aren't they all great? <laughs> That's wonderful. We, uh, we congratulate you on that. That uh, is a wonderful thing for sure. Anything else? All right, seeing nothing, then I would invite Kathy to come up and lead us in our responsive reading. The shepherds sat in the outskirts of town and of society. Of no importance to those of importance from a human standpoint. Yet the wisdom of love of God himself was demonstrated to them. And the joy of the Lord was demonstrated through them. And the message of God's salvation was spoken from their lips. And the song of salvation was sung in their hearts. Would you remain standing and we will sing our first hymn, the first Noel. His guitar, or yeah, guitar. Hymnals. Uh, number 245 if you want to look at it in your hymnal.
the first Noel the angel did say was to certain poor shepherds in fields as they lay in fields where they lay keeping their sheep on a cold winter's night that was so deep no well no well no well no well born is the king of israel they look it up and saw a star shining in the east beyond them far and to the earth it gave great light and so it continued both day and night no king was their intent and to follow the star wherever it went no And let's join together now for a time of prayer. Dear Lord, we thank you today for this chance to draw back together and uh, enjoy the fellowship of one another. Lord, we lift up those that have already been mentioned to you that are struggling with health this day. You know who they are and how exactly they are doing. And we pray that you would touch each and one of these people's lives, uh, leading them to better health and to, more importantly even, a closer relationship with you. 
And for those that have uh, struggles that are known only to you, please bless them in that as well. Show them the answers that they need and help them to find um, the, that you have the answers for their lives and that they can trust you with everything that concerns them. We lift up the concerns of our whole world, the things that are going between Russia and Ukraine, for the, the massacre in Myanmar and, and the, the, just the many hurtful things that are going on that um, are just going against your laws of peace and love. We pray that you would be able to intervene and show who you are to them and to right these wrongs that are occurring. We uh, pray about the COVID increases that we've seen and in the Omicron variant. Lord, we pray your protection on upon the people that are being exposed to this. Uh, lessen their uh, symptoms, help them to come through completely. Uh, we, we pray for uh, the people that are finding inconveniences in other ways, well, like when it comes to their airline flights and all that are being canceled. We pray that you would help how this is interfering in all of our lives. We pray that you would bring this to a swift end and that we would find a health and a more stable way of living very soon. We pray for our church and uh, its functioning. We thank you for the ability to gather together and share in each other's joys and in each other's sorrows. We pray your blessing on all of us as we seek to follow you. We pray for all our government leaders from the local level on up to the present, president, and even worldwide, Lord, that the leaders would be seeking to follow you and using your judgments and your directions for the things that uh, they need to be working on. We thank you, especially at this time of year, for the gift of family and the time to enjoy each other, especially with Christmas that was yesterday and the new year that's coming up during this week. Lord, we thank you and praise you for giving each other one another. Help us to grow in our relationships with each other. And more importantly, Lord, help us to grow in our relationship with you. We thank you for sending Jesus, your son, to come and save us from our sins. We thank you for that peace and joy that that alone can really bring in the midst of all of these trying things. We thank you for your love and for the way you work in our lives. And we ask your blessings for this new year as it comes upon us. Lead us into more and more peace, the peace that only you can bring. Lord, we pray too for this service that you would give us your words, help Jamie to speak the words that you would have us hear, and give us the ears to hear what you're saying to each and every one of us. Um, and as we consider the role of the shepherds that uh, are the topic of the service today, help us to fulfill in our own lives the roles that you would have us fill. We pray all this in the name of Jesus. And we lift up to you now the prayer that you taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Well, back when we uh, first started getting rolling into Sunday school again this year, which is, has been uh, uh, going for the last uh, three weeks, uh, and uh, was not meeting today, but we'll meet again next Sunday. One of the things we talked about was orienting the lessons, uh, because we didn't know how many kids would be here, that sort of thing. 
there is an adult Sunday school class, which is meeting consistently and has been for some time, and you are welcome to come and be a part of that. You can check that out, talk to Jeff after the service, and he can give you some information if you are interested. But as far as the children's part of it goes, we weren't sure how many would be here, so we really planned the beginning uh, to coincide with Advent. And in fact, what we uh, did was we decided we would focus on Mary and on Joseph and on Jesus and uh, on the story of that first Christmas. And so uh, my preaching has followed along with that. We decided we'd try and reinforce that uh, during the regular service time as well. So we had, a, we had a sermon about Mary and a sermon about Joseph, and last week it was uh, focused on Jesus. Today we're going to talk about the shepherds. And, uh, and the shepherds uh, are an interesting crew to be brought into this whole thing because they were... Uh, uh, it, it was an example of God's love for all people because in those days, now we look back in the Old Testament, we think of David and we think of, of Jesus as the good shepherd and we have this very high opinion about what shepherds are, but in the days uh, and in the area of Bethlehem, in the days when Jesus was born, most of the shepherds were hirelings and, uh, and they were out in the hills and they got hired to take the sheep out there and people were glad when they were gone. <laughs> they, weren't, they weren't the highest echelons of society. They probably smelled funny. And, uh, and they were not really like famous people like you. You know, you think of David, uh, the shepherd and, and that kind of thing. That was not how most people viewed shepherds by the time that Jesus was born. And yet what's really cool is the fact that God told them first, when it comes to the world, he told Mary, of course, first, and Joseph, and Mary shared it with Elizabeth. But in terms of the whole world becoming aware of Jesus, the very first people that it is announced to by God are the shepherds. So I don't know, have you ever felt like you were sort of low on the totem pole? That's what my mother always used to say. Yeah, like you really weren't as good maybe as other people thought they were around you. Uh, or that you weren't as popular as some other people are. Or that uh, other people didn't consider your feelings when they said or did things. And they considered other people's feelings. Have you ever felt like that? Well, the shepherds were professionals at feeling like that because that's how people saw them. But that's not how God saw them. God loved them. And so when the time came to announce that Jesus had been born, the very first people who hear it, and they don't hear it from human mouths, they hear it from whose mouths? Angel mouths. And the angels were sent by God. Yeah. So, you know, that's one of the wonderful things about being a Christian. God always thinks of us first. He thinks of everybody first. We can't even conceive of that, of course. But the fact is that he thinks of you first because he loves you so very much and he values you so very much. And that's one of the great lessons of the shepherds, that God loved them so much that though nobody else even knew who they were, God knew exactly who they were, and they got the message first. So let's bow our heads and pray. Lord, we thank you for the shepherds and your love for them and your love for us and always putting us first in your heart. Help us to put you first in our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. 
Again, this morning we won't be taking up an offering, but there are offering plates in the back, and we invite you to leave your tithes and your gifts and your offerings there as you exit from the church and from the worship service this morning. But uh, more than that, I would invite you, as always, to take a moment of, uh, of prayer and uh, bow your head before the Lord and let him show you what it is that he wants from you. Not just the finances, but what does he want from you according to his desire? We know what the shepherds, what God wanted the shepherds to do. He wanted them to rejoice and he wanted them to share the good news. What is God calling you to do? How are you to serve him with not just your finances, but with your time, your energy, your mind, your thoughts, your words, and your deeds? So let's take a moment to open ourselves to God for that, and then Kathy will lead us in a prayer of dedication. Dear Lord, the, with the gifts and the tithes and the offerings that we bring here today, we give them for the furtherance of your kingdom, but not just our monetary offerings, but the gift of ourselves. Lord, lead us, show us how to give more and more freely of ourselves to serve you and for the furtherance of your kingdom. In Jesus' name, amen. The scripture reading today can be found in Luke chapter 2, verses 8 through 20. And in that region, there were shepherds out in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them. And they were filled with fear. And the angel said to them, be not afraid, for behold, I bring you good news of a great joy which will come to all the people. For to you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find a babe wrapped in swaddling cloths and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among men with whom he is pleased. When the angels went away from them into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go over to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has made known to us. And they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. And when they saw it, they made known the saying which had been told them concerning this child. And all who heard it wondered at what the shepherds told them. But Mary kept all these things, pondering them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told to them. The word of God for the people of God. Just in case you didn't really hear it the first 229 times I've said it since I've been in uh, Owego, I uh, have had a love in my heart of hearts for all things cowboy since I was a little kid. Always wanted to be one, always pretended that I was one, all the way through my childhood and at every chance even in the quasi-adult state in which I live at the moment you might have noticed. Saturday morning started out with Roy Rogers and Dale Evans and Trigger and Bullet, then my friend Flicka, 
Saturday afternoons with any ancient horse opera that might have graced the silver screen at one time, but had been downsized to the living room screen at that point. If there was a horse, a six-gun, and a Winchester, I was in. Sky King was one of the great disappointments of my childhood in that it had a few horses, yes, but very few. Everyone dressed in Western garb or the Western garb that was uh, television Western, yes. But the real star was an airplane, and that just didn't do a thing for me at all. Back in those days, you could tell the good guys from the bad guys. The classic good guy cowboys wore light-colored shirts. Uh, I always saw it all in black and white, so I have no idea what color they really were. And uh, they were always clean, and they wore white hats that were always spotless, even missing sweat stains. Bad guys wore black, and black hats in particular. You could always tell them apart. Well, I had horses growing up. I spent a lot of time with them. I enjoyed every opportunity to drink in the perfume of equinity. Kathy and I directed horse camps for years, and once the kids were gone on Saturday after the camp ended for the week, we would embark on a trail ride through the hills of central New York every year, and then we would go home, waiting until that last moment before going to bed, before I showered off the smells of the horses and the leather. Because even as intoxicating as I found those scents, I realized that to most, it would just have left me to be perceived as a dirty, smelly uh, individual. And the scent that would have most established itself in their nostrils would not have been the leather of the saddle, nor the sweat of the horse, but something else. Yeah. I, uh, I also watched a lot of television documentaries from the Old West in the form of John Wayne movies. At least four or five epic, if conflicting, replays of the OK Corral and, uh, and those sorts of things so that I did realize that not all cowboys were heroes. In the towns, their arrival coincided with chaos, violence, and a general sense of rowdy trouble. Turn in your guns at the sheriff's office, boys. Rarely respected at best, and as I've read more actual history, I found that uh, the cowboys of the Old West were rarely respected at all. And these herders of countless cattle drives to feed the thousands and the millions in the East longing for a good steak, the perception was that they were best kept out West, to the fullest extent possible, out in the wilderness of the great western frontier and away from any sort of civilization, they were largely perceived to be uncouth, violent, destructive, and generally pestiferous, in spite of their vital role in the economy of many of the towns of the west, shipping points of the railroad for the cattle to go back east places like Dodge City, Kansas. They had to put up with this, the uh, cowboys, but they didn't have to like them. They were rarely cherished. They were like an annual plague of locusts, which somehow brought financial prosperity, while at the same time decimating the peace and quiet and relative safety of living in town for us civilized folks. And, uh, and that really was how cowboys were perceived at the time. But we have made them into heroes, have we not? Anybody here who really hates cowboys? Be careful. Okay, so yeah, you, you, know, you know what I'm saying, right? Yeah. So why in tarnation, to use a term often uttered by Walter Brennan in one of, of his many cowboy roles, would I spend so much time talking about the cowboys of the Old West and the perceptions of them now and then and in general denigrating them by the time we got done with the discussion? The answer to the question is because it perfectly coincides with the image and the reality of the shepherds of Bethlehem 
in the days of Herod the king and of Caesar Augustus, tax bringer extraordinaire. We today perceive the shepherds of that holy night as peaceful, peaceful, bucolic, gentle, beloved, and hardworking souls, sort of King David's in the making, if you will. Like the noble singing cowboys of the 50s, if hats were worn by the shepherds, we would perceive them all to be wearing white. White, white. The reality, however, is that the shepherds in the days of Jesus' birth and around the Bethlehem area in particular were hirelings. They didn't own the sheep that they took care of. They were hired, and, and one wonders if part of the reason they were hired was not simply to get them out of town. They were considered dirty, uncouth, semi-vagrants with no real social value whatsoever, better kept out in the hills, tending to the flocks, that did not belong to them, but to their superiors. People of social standing. People who could afford to hire others to do their dirty work. They were considered to be rude and crude, and no one who was anyone wanted to have very much to do with them. And that's the actual status of the shepherds in the New Testament. And I remember the first time I heard this analysis of them, And I thought, well, that's a bunch of baloney. Look back at David. You know, David was this shepherd, and he was highly regarded as a shepherd. And he was tending his father's sheep. And then I began to look into some of the historical stuff, and I found that contrary to my image, the true image of the shepherds at that time was one of a bunch of scoundrels. Well, not scoundrels, but just dirty, uneducated people that nobody really liked or wanted to have around. Now, being Jews, they were educated at a much higher level than the people around them. Keep that in mind. But they were not looked up to by anyone. They were not respected. They were the scum of the earth in most people's eyes. It was a shock to me to find that out. It really was a surprise to me. But a bit of study revealed that, in point of fact, that was the case. However, on this night of nights, when Jesus was born, we see something truly amazing. And in point of fact, the more we think about it, the more exciting it makes the whole event because God loved them dirty old shepherds. And he invited them to come on into town of an evening and share a little celebration. And then, that night, he invited also the greatest of the great, those wise men from the east, to come to Bethlehem to see what he had done. But here's where it's really fascinating. What was the invitation to the wise men that he sent of the night that Jesus was born? God said, okay, it's on. <laughs> and he, uh, he did that, and, and these wise and educated men knew that God had done something major in the Jewish world, and they had a, a real sense of what it was. And that's a nice invitation, isn't it? Have you ever gotten an invitation in the mail? for something big, and it was really a fancy invitation. You know, do you remember filling out your graduation announcements from high school? You know, and all the gold edges and all the, you know, and it really, and, and you were so proud and it was so beautiful and it was so, you know, well, that was like the light. How did God invite the shepherds? The lowest of the low. This was what he did for the highest of the high, Without another word, without an explanation on his, on his part, that's what he did. What did he do for the shepherds? You know, Western Union. How's that? He sent legions 
of angels. Maybe he figured that's what it would take to straighten them up. I don't know, okay? You know, it's like the the whole cavalry came in. But he sent legions of angels to personally let them know what he had done and to invite them to come on into town and see this thing which had happened. That a Savior had been born to them. He, He didn't leave any doubt in their minds what he was talking about. He sent legions of angels to sing for them that night and to inspire them and to invite them to come and meet his son. Now, that's nice, you know. But how about a personal invitation? You know, doesn't that, doesn't that feel a little more gracious? Doesn't that feel a little more loving? Would they possibly have been bold enough to even begin to approach the throne of God, even if it was a manger, without a personal invitation from God? I don't think so. You ever notice that? Some people are terrified to come to church because they're afraid the roof will fall in because they know who they are. And they'll say things like that, and and they joke about it, but folks, there's no joke in that. Not most of the time. There are people out there in the world that we live in who have uh, been waiting all their lives for an invitation from somebody like you. You know? We who are are shepherds. (laughs) You know, we we who are, are not always the wise men and women of the world. But you see the result of that invitation and the result of their acknowledgement of it, and the result of their going where they were invited, seeing who they were invited to see, and what is it? Well, it's like they they shot up the town, you know. (laughs) They, they, They left the manger, and they woke everybody up. (laughs) <laughs> coming out of the town, they were yelling and hollering and, and telling everybody they saw that what God had shown them and, uh, and, and talking about Jesus. You know? Yeah. Where do you see yourself in the scheme of things in this life? Do you see yourself as a, as a wise man or a wise woman? Or do you see yourself plunged into the depth of humility? You know, in one case, you're exalted to the highest point of your sphere of influence. In another, you are plunged to the depth of humility. Are you one of the dirty, lowly shepherds? Or are you a, a wise person with resources to utilize at your disposal? Or are you, as most of us perceive ourselves, I suspect, somewhere in between? The message is the same for every single one of us, and the message is come and worship. The wise men saw the star, knew what it meant, and they went and worshipped. The shepherds received a direct invitation, glorious and magnificent, to come and worship. And you also have received an invitation to come and worship. Have you extended that invitation to others to come and worship? Do you rejoice in the gift of God's salvation in your own life? Do you encourage it in the lives of others? Do you share this truth with everyone you can in any way that you can, as often as you can? Well, the shepherds who were no one found that in God's eyes they were someone. And in that delight, they wanted everyone else to know that they were someone too. It is a joy-filled announcement that we have to make. It is the joy of salvation and the hope-filled truth in our lives. 
Roy Rogers used to end most of his programs saying, may the good Lord take a liking to you. The angels came to the shepherds to tell them that in point of fact, the good Lord had taken a liking to them and to all who would receive that good news that unto you is born this day in the city of Bethlehem, a Savior who is Christ the Lord. Well, I'll, I'll get off the uh, cowboy theme soon, and I may, yeah, that may have been it right there. But I will never get off the shepherding theme. Because that is what you and I are at both ends of the equation. We are shepherded beings, shepherded by the good shepherd. And we are to be shepherds of the sheep that we find around us. May it be so in your life. May you find the joy of that. May you fulfill that calling in your life, whether you are a wise man or a shepherd in terms of the status that the world displays. But always know that God's status for you is that he will send a legion of angels to you with his invitation because his love for you is so great. I hope that you feel that in your lives and I hope that you live that in your lives and I, I hope that uh, of all the messages of Christmas that you take that away with you this year. May it be so. Amen. I would invite you then to stand as you're able and to... Um, yep, it's up there already. And I will... Play along and uh, we will sing together, O Little Town of Bethlehem. Of his heaven, 
no ear may hear his coming, but in this world of sin, where meek souls will receive him still, the tear Christ enters in. O holy child of Bethlehem, descend to us, we pray. Cast out our sin and enter in. Be born in us today. We hear the Christmas angels, the great glad tidings tell. Oh, come to us. Abide with us, our Lord Emmanuel. In a little town, which wasn't even important in the area in which it existed at the time, God made the greatest event in the history of humanity occur. And then he sent out his invitations and he, he sent a gilt-edged card to the wise men and said, my son has been born, come and see him. They knew what he meant. But to the shepherds, the lowliest of the low, he sent his legions of angels to speak the word of invitation in love and celebration. So it is that you are called to find the presence of Christ in your life and to rejoice in it and to share it with others because you cannot help yourself. May it be so in your life. Amen.